So the next step uh, is uh, possibly the trickiest part of the build from a, a soldering perspective, and that is the uh, USB se section. Um, and the USB section contains the uh, USB jack itself, USB B style jack, the connecting circuitry to uh, the AT Tiny, uh, which is here. There's an LP2992 3.3 volt uh, low dropout uh, power supply. And then there's the SI570 um, uh, synthesizer, which is used to uh, generate the uh, local oscillator, oscillator frequency. So the trickiness comes from uh, those last two components, and uh, let me just show show you those on the uh, on the board itself, and you can kind of see how tiny they are. Um, so the synthesizer is right here, the SI570, and the uh, 3.3 volt power power supply is right there so if I'll, I'll, I'll zoom in on those a little bit and uh, you know you can really see how tiny they are um, the SI570 has the additional challenge of it doesn't actually have any uh, tabs for you to solder so it just comes with some uh, crenellations uh, in the uh, in the body of the chip itself um, there's a, a video that I mentioned before by W2AEW which uh, shows the best way of attacking that, uh, that style of IC. I did actually film myself uh, soldering those two in. Uh, unfortunately, I got my hand in the way of both and, uh, and so that was uh, kind of ruined footage there and uh, obviously I wasn't going to try and desolder them to, to do it again. So the circuitry itself, just moving back to the uh, moving back to the um, schematic here, uh, is is really quite simple. Um, the five volts from the USB comes in here and powers both the AT Tiny pin A to the AT Tiny, as well as the uh, LP two nine nine two three point three volt power supply. The SI570 is in turn powered from this 3.3 volt uh, power supply. Um, you can see that uh, that that comes in. Uh, here's uh, the here's the uh, power supply VDD here that comes in from the V out of the the 3.3 uh, uh, volt power supply. Now the uh, SI570 is controlled uh, via I squared C from the AT Tiny. Uh, the only other function of the uh, of the uh, microcontroller, other than controlling the frequency of the local oscillator, uh, it's actually on this uh, diagram here. But it uh, actually controls an opto isolator that uh, turns the PA and driver circuitry off or on. Um, in fact, uh, it's kind of one of the features of this circuit. The whole of this circuit is uh, galvanically isolated from the uh, from the rest of the transmitter. You can see that uh, wide swath there, separating the USB part of the uh, circuit from the from the rest of the board. Um, just moving back to the uh, to the circuit here, you can see we've got two 3.3 volt Zenas. And uh, their job is to protect the computer's USB from possible 5 volt signal from the microcontroller. So it's not to protect the microcontroller, it's, it's to protect your uh, PC's USB, um, uh, USB circuits. Um, so testing um, that will be done uh, using the software that you actually have to install on your PC. And there's an important note here, you must install the software on your PC prior to connecting the ensemble to the PC. Um, now I've already got it on the laptop that I'm, I'm gonna demonstrate after I uh, pull the circuits together, but apparently failure to do so may result in various driver problems uh, and that'll get you into a whole pile of trouble. Uh, there's a link below to uh, the uh, software install instructions. They're quite straightforward. There's some driver circuitry you have to install and there's actually a little testing uh, user interface uh, that you have to install as well, which we'll be using later on to uh, demonstrate the functionality uh, that the functionality is working. Uh, the AT Tiny itself comes pre-flash, so you don't have to install any anything on that. Um, and uh, so, next step, we'll move right on to the uh, the build itself. And uh, after that, as I mentioned, we'll be doing testing. 
So I thought I might do uh, one of the SMD com capacitors. Uh, uh, this is just my technique. I'm not saying it's the best technique, uh, but um, uh, it, it kind of works for me. Um, so uh, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm install this uh, 0.1 microfarad capacitor in this uh, this slot right here. And uh, you know, generally the way I <clears throat> like to do it is to put a dab of solder on one of the tabs, make sure it's just one of the tabs. You don't want to have two of the tabs, you'll get the uh, SMD component at a, at a strange angle. So put a dab of solder on one of the tabs, um, and then using a pair of tweezers, fix the uh, one end of the SMD component down. And then when you're done with that, it's easy to solder the other one. So I generally start with the non-grounded uh, tab first. That's the easiest to, to get a piece of solder on. Uh, the, you can tell the difference. This is the grounded one because it has the little outlets there. And then this is the, the, uh, the other side. Um, so let's get going. Um, also, one of the things I, like, I do like to do is put uh, a daub of uh, solder paste down. Helps the uh, solder flow a lot, a lot better. So let's get that down. Got my soldering iron hot here. Clean it off. And just simply put a dab of solder on one end. There we go, that's done. Now getting my uh, pair of tweezers, this is the tricky part. Gotta get everything aligned here. So I'll get my uh, SMD component and with a little dab there. Make sure it sits down. There we go, that's one side of it done. And then the other side becomes a simple matter of, there we go. And uh, that's, uh, that's getting an SMD component down. Um, obviously, with those size of SMD components, it's, it's pretty easy. You have to do other techniques, uh, you know, with these, uh, with these smaller pad sizes here, but it's kind of the same thing. Use lots of flux, uh, get it down, tack one side of it down, and then, uh, you know, and then uh, apply the other side. A little bit of a different technique on these ones, and uh, I'll, I'll do a demo of, uh, of that in a, in a, in a, in a later video. Uh, so anyway, I thought people might be interested in that. Uh, I'll continue with the rest uh, in uh, high-speed uh, mode. So the USB section is complete. Um, the next step before connecting the uh, radio to the computer 
is to install the USB drivers and the config uh, software. Um, the link to that is below, um, but make sure you do install the software first. I already have it installed on, uh, on my laptop here, so I'm kind of ready to go. So once all the software is installed, it's time to test that uh, we're actually indeed getting a, a frequency output from the SI570. So I've set up uh, the uh, configuration software on my uh, laptop here. You can, uh, you can see that here. Um, and uh, you can see also that it's uh, currently uh, not connected uh, to the radio. So I'll go ahead and uh, connect the USB and that light should turn green. Uh, as it's doing now, and this is the default frequency. Um, so let me just change that uh, default frequency to 7.0 megahertz. It makes the math later on a little bit simpler. Um, just do that. All right, so now it's uh, 20, uh, seven, uh, seven megahertz. Um, so if I pan back to the uh, frequency counter, you can see that it's actually, uh, it should be outputting four times seven, seven megahertz. That's the configuration of this, uh, of this radio. But you can see it isn't. Uh, it should be 28 megahertz and it's actually outputting 27.9780034 uh, megahertz. And uh, so we can fix this. Uh, there is a configuration menu, a calibration menu in the, in the soft rock. So let me go, I'll pan back there and, uh, and show you that. So there's the, uh, the configuration menu. And what you have to do is uh, uh, take that uh, frequency that's currently in there, divide it by four, and then put that in the uh, real number here. So if I uh, do that, let me just, I've got a calculator up here. So 27.9780234. Divided by four is 6.9945075. So if I put that in the real frequency here, 6.9945075, and then I click on the calibrate button. Now you can see when I pan back here to the uh, frequency counter, it's now uh, uh, the LOs now are outputting. 27.9999995 megahertz. So that's as close as I'm going to get to uh, 28 megahertz. So that's basically the uh, LO setup. Uh, as I said, it's outputting four times uh, the frequency. The next step in the build is to, uh, there is a, a, a transformer um, that acts between the USB section of the circuit and the primary radio section of the circuit. I'm going to install that transformer and then uh, there's a flip-flop, D-type flip-flop that gets installed. It's another surface mount component and that D-type flip-flop, is it's configured in such a way as to, uh, there's two flip-flops that are connected to each other that uh, take that 28 megahertz, divide it by four and output two signals in quadrature, which is what we need for the radio. So that's the next step. Um, I'll go ahead and uh, install the, um, the flip-flop uh, and the transformer and there's a, there's a little bit of associated circuitry as well. Um, and then uh, we'll, uh, we'll come back and have a look at that.